Okay, hello everybody. Today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Cessna 152. We have a 66 nautical mile flight from 0 Quebec 9 Sonoma Sky Park to Tango Charlie Yankee Tracy Municipal. Both of those are freeware airports, so check out the video details if you'd like to download them. We are flying with live weather, live time, and we'll be using VFR reporting points and pilotage to navigate to where we need to get to go. Should be an awesome flight, so let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. Okay, we've got Monica as our co-pilot, as always. And we will head down here first, make sure our parking brake is set, switches are off, circuit breakers are in, mixture to idle cutoff, throttle idle, car beats in. Head down here and get our fuel selector on. Next, we'll turn the battery and master on. Check fuel tank left and right, just above half a tank. Looks good. We'll open up the window. Clear prop. Head back down here. We've got the beacon on. Mixture comes into full rich. Crack the throttle prime. One, two, three strokes of the primer. Feet are on the brakes. Keys in the ignition and crank it over. We've got oil pressure. RPMs at a thousand. That looks good. We'll tweak that a little bit and then head back down to the mixture and lean the mixture for ground operations. But down to the switches here. We'll get on the taxi and the landing light in prep for taxi. Up to the avionics panel. We'll get COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2 on. That all looks good. So we've got 1228, which is CTAF, and 121.5, which is guard. We've got 112.2, which is a VOR that we will be using if we need it. However, we are planning on using pilotage for this. Transponders to standby, and we've got our altitude of 3,500 dialed into the autopilot. We'll close the window, have a look, and you can just see the windsock back there. Windsock says runway 8. We'll make our CTAF call. Sonoma Sky Park traffic says the 565 Whiskey taxi from the ramp to runway 8. Hold short. Sonoma. Test our brakes and they work. We'll hang a left here and then a right following this taxi line right to the hold short line. Should be a super short taxi. And I love that the grapevines are modeled on both sides of this runway here. It's a really awesome little freeware airport. So here's our hold short lines. We'll stop here and do a run up. Pull the parking brake out, look back, elevator up, elevator down, left rudder, right rudder, right aileron, left aileron. Mixture coming into full rich, we'll bring the throttle up to 1700. Get ready for our mag check. Mag left. We got a good drop and back up. Mag right. Good drop, same amount, back up, looking good. Next we'll head down here and pull out the carb heat. We got a good drop for the carb heat, put that back in. Now we'll go to throttle idle, didn't quit, carb heat out, didn't quit again, back in. We'll get the strobes on, transponder to mode C, make her C tough. Sonoma Sky Park traffic says the 565 Whiskey back taxi runway 8 for departure, Sonoma Sky Park. So we've got a short runway here of 2,100 feet, so we'll want to use all the runway. Although you can't land on the displaced threshold here, you can taxi and take off from the displaced threshold, so we may as well use it. We're going to configure for a short field takeoff and make our CTAF call. Sonoma Sky Park traffic says no 565 Whiskey departing runway 8 to the south at 3500 Sonoma Sky Park. Alright, we did full throttle with feet on the brakes, we released, now we're going to accelerate to rotation speed, and then when we rotate, we're going to climb at VX instead of VY. So we're going to pitch up and climb at 60 knots here. Higher nose up attitude than a normal takeoff climb. And as we clear our obstacles, then we can nose down and switch to a VY climb. Looks good, we're up. If you'd like to see me do a real life short field takeoff from a 2,100 foot runway in a Cessna Skyhawk, check out the link in the video above. If you follow the channel, you know in real life I was 
just back in the pilot's seat after a four month break about a week ago and here's a photo from that first time back. It was awesome to be in the sky once again. As we climb, I'll open up for flight and take you through the flight brief. So we're departing from Sonoma Sky Park, which is an untowered field. We're going to head south upon departure to Sonoma Raceway, which is our first waypoint. If we look at the weather, it's seven knots out of the east. The TAF looks about the same with overcast at 25,000, so good VFR flying conditions. Once we reach our first waypoint, we're going to follow the shoreline for the San Pablo Bay, the northern shoreline, aiming for Carquinez Bridge as our first VFR reporting point. Then we're going to continue over the bay to Benicia Bridge, and then once again continue along the shoreline heading east to Antioch Bridge, just past Antioch. We'll turn southeast, and then we've got a giant visual waypoint, which is Clifton Court 4 Bay, which should be easy to spot. We'll overfly that, continue to Tracy, and then finally arrive at Tracy Municipal Field. There's two runways at Tracy Municipal, now if we open up the weather, currently the wind is again out of the east, so that's what we're expecting, but we'll have to see what the wind sock says when we get there. I'd like to arrive from the south side of the field instead of overflying the field, but there's actually something I missed in the brief on the sectional there that's going to come back later in the video, so you'll have to see what that is, and if you rewind, you can see if you spot what's going to be a bit of a problem. So we're approaching Sonoma Raceway here. That's our first waypoint. We're going to turn left here, and here we are. We're on track, so we're going to overfly the bay and sit back and enjoy that awesome flight simulator scenery. Everyone's running like they stole a dream Images of magazines Take your chance while you're still young Glory flickers Like a candle in the desert sun Wasted time on an overpass Watching how nothing lasts The streets are filled with a hollow glow The bellies ache with shallow hungers grow I mentioned that I missed something in the brief and ForeFlight has now pointed it out to me by identifying that my current trajectory is going to take me right through restricted space which it has highlighted in orange to the southwest of the field. I wanted to arrive at the southwest of the field from a pattern entry, so plan B is now to arrive from the north side of the field and overfly the field at pattern altitude plus 500 feet. Some viewers have asked that I show a little bit more of what I've been doing on approach and landing, so we're gonna do that now. I've got Cloud Ahoy 3D visualization of my foreflight track that I'll leave on the screen. You can see my aircraft is the yellow dot that's traveling, so you can see exactly where we're at. 
So I'm approaching the field now from the north and I'm going to fly over it until I get my eyes on the windsock. So keep your eyes peeled. You can see the two runways of Tracy just below us. I can see that there's a ring. Can't quite see the windsock yet. And there it is. There's actually two windsocks on the left and the right. And when I looked at these windsocks the first time I did this, I thought that they were pointing to runway 24 because they're really small, but now in the video review I can see they're actually pointing to runway 8. <laughs> so I end up landing with the tailwind by mistake, but that's why we're configuring for 24. So we're going to do a nice big teardrop turn to spin ourselves around and come in for a runway 24 pattern entry. I've got some terrain, you can see mountains to uh, keep an eye on. There's the field straight ahead and I've cut in a little bit tight. I would rather come in on a 45. This is more of a 90 degree angle. So we're not gonna have much time to roll out onto the downwind here before we're already going to be a beam or touchdown point. So I made this a little bit harder for myself than it needed to be, but it's still working. So we're gonna keep on proceeding. So we're at pattern altitude now. We are a beam the touchdown point. I'm going to pull back the power, confirm that I'm in the arc for flaps, and put in my first notch of flaps. And now we've sped up to the point where I'm going to turn left base, so we're at our 45 degree from the field. We're on the base leg here, looking over my shoulder with track IR, and we're in a nice descent. You can see the descent right on the Cloud Ahoy profile. So we've got a good 500 foot per minute descent, and we're at about 75 knots currently. There we go, 70 knots, looking better. We dropped in another notch of flaps here on the base leg, and now we're going to turn and roll out on to final. Altitude is perfect. I did overshoot final a bit, so we're going to keep on turning until we pick up that center line. You can see that I've got one red over one white. Now we're a little bit high. Just going to sort out our speeds here and our descent rates to get back onto glide slope. Speeds down to 65 knots. There we go. We're back to one red and one white. We've got a nice stabilized approach. Center line's looking good. Runway is made, pull the power, keep that nose down. Hold up the nose. and set it down. And you can see the windsock to my right is really more of a crosswind currently, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> I misjudged the windsock when I was over midfield uh, because it ended up being almost a direct crosswind on landing. And we've got a marsh war here, so we may as well use them. And kill the engine. All right, that was a lot of fun. I love flights where you use pilotage to get from point A to point B, and you cannot beat Microsoft Flight Simulator when it comes to flying by pilotage due to its realistic scenery. So I hope you enjoy realistic general aviation content like this. If you do, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.